Okay, today we're going to be talking about our sun and the Laptus moon. And this was originally a video, but I just have a still shot of it. And, and just ignore this image right here for right now. We're going to be talking about the sun. Now, this picture of the sun is seen through a telescope with a filter on it so they can study what's going on, like this big flare up here and different things. So they, they use different filters to see different things on the sun and study the sun. Now... With different filters, and they've learned throughout the years that you can always also tell what the temperature of something is by the color it emits through different filters and stuff. So they've discovered how hot the sun is and things like that uh, while they're studying all that. Now, we're taught that nothing can burn without oxygen. Well, clearly that is not true. The sun burns up there in the vacuum of space just fine. And the sun basically is comprised of plasma. So it, it burns really hot, but in the vacuum of space with absolutely no oxygen or anything. So you can see the different flare-ups and things all over in this picture. Now, the surface of the sun is basically 10 million degrees. And going to the center of the sun, they're, they're projecting about 27 million degrees. So the sun is, a, as we all know, is pretty hot and it's, and it's getting hotter here on this planet. Now this this was originally a video, so I, I got a still shot. So the, there was an astronomer taking video of the sun, studying all this, and just out of the blue, this thing right here, which is they're referring to it as an orb, flies into the corona of the sun, just right out of the blue, uh, alien spacecraft of some, time, some type, and then you see this tornado looking thing right here uh, and NASA has confirmed that, that that's what it is and they're referring to it as an orb uh, but that's not the amazing part of this picture so imagine you have a, a large spaceship and you need a, a power source well if you could recreate the sun artificially and encapsulate some of that plasma which I believe this is what they're doing now then you would just have an unlimited power source. And uh, if you can go and find the original video of this, you can see that ship just fly right in there, right in the sun's corona, do their thing, and just fly right back out again. And, and it doesn't take very long at all. Uh, and it's pretty quick. Uh, and they say that over on the left-hand side, which you can't see in this picture, there was actually a second one. But none of that is the amazing part of this, this picture. Uh, what the amazing part of this picture is, if you know how big the sun is, is the sun's 10 times the size of our planet. So when you're looking at this orb here and you're comparing it to the sun, that alien spacecraft is the size of our planet. It's just huge. Uh, you know, and people say that that's not possible, but right there it is. And it's all confirmed by NASA. And, uh, you know, there was a second one off to the left-hand side, which you can't see, and it's really hard to see, but they've taken this video. you got to go and find the original video, and some people have taken the video and, and changed it and turned it into a religious thing and all that, so it's hard to find the original video where somebody hasn't put it to music or changed it to some uh, Bible thing or something, you know, it's their thing, and uh, more power to them, but... If you can find the original video, you can see the thing flies in there pretty quickly, sucks up a bunch of plasma, and then flies right back out again. Uh, which brings me to my sex second picture, the Laptus moon. This is a picture of it right here, and i got to apologize for the clarity of this. I tried to get this picture and, and blow it up to do this image for you so I can do this uh, thing on it. But the Laptus moon is Saturn's third largest moon. And there's lots of pictures of it, and it was discovered a long time ago. And it has this really strange ridge that goes all the way around it here, which is, is unusual. But I saw this. My wife was water, watching Jeopardy one night, and they flashed their pictures of this up there. I've ne never seen this, this photo before or heard of that before. Uh, but they flashed that picture up there, and I, I guess I'm the only one left on the planet with eyeballs or something. I'm not sure. But the question was, is they wanted to know what the rim of this was called, and the answer was the equator, because it goes all the way around the center of it. And again, if you go and look pictures of this moon up, 
uh, the proper spelling is in the beginning of this uh, video here, uh, you know, in the caption there. Uh, there's lots and lots of pictures of it and you can see that is much more clear than the one I got now. So again, I apologize for that. I tried to blow this up the best I could. But let's talk about asteroids for a second. Now, we've seen, there's a giant asteroid hole in, on our planet right here. Actually, there's a bunch of them, but one was so big uh, that they didn't even realize it was there until they were looking at it from outer space. And it's like 50 miles across, and, and I don't remember how many how deep the thing is, but it's huge. But each asteroid is a different size, a different shape, traveling through space at a different speed. And some of them hit impact straight on, some of them go sideways and all that kind of stuff. So depending on the speed and the size would be depending on the depth of the crater and the size of the crater. Now this thing here has craters all over the place. And uh, go online and, and look up better images of this because there is a lot better images of this. But, but the thing that I want to point out here saying all that about impact craters is you can look over this entire planet and no matter how big these craters are, how little the craters are, there's some craters on there that are just huge. They're all almost exactly the same depth. There's no shallow ones. There's no deep ones. If you look at this whole entire thing, all these crater impact holes on here are exactly the same except for the diameter. There's no giant deep ones. There's no super shallow ones. They're all the same. That, my friends, is not possible. Not to mention this thing going across the middle here, and, and I don't know if you can see it really well, but there's almost a, a, a crack in it right here where you can see. This thing is a space station. I, I can't believe I'm the only one that, that can see this. There's no way that you could recreate that hump all the way around a planet artificially, no matter what's going on in space much less have all those impact craters almost exactly the same depth all the way around the entire planet. This is obviously an old alien space station, whether it's been abandoned or not abandoned, I don't know. Uh, we recently launched a brand new space telescope last couple of months. Uh, makes the Hubble telescope look like a uh, an office brand or something, but uh, they have reached farther out in space, and uh, I just watched a show on it, actually. I don't know how many people can see that show, but they have uh, seen this flickering blue light off in the distance with their space telescope, and they wouldn't zoom in on it, or, or they couldn't. I'm not sure which. But uh, they even said on there that that flickering blue light could be nothing other than, uh, they call it a, a, an alien megastructure. So they're, they're admitting that these things are out there. They're just not telling anybody about it. So I'm telling you about it now. Uh, you can say I'm an idiot. You can call me all kinds of weird names or what. I, I don't really care. Uh, it's obvious this thing is not no moon. Otherwise, the crater impacts would be all different depths and different sizes and different things. And, and it's just obvious. I can't believe that nobody's noticed that before. So I, I wouldn't be sending things to Mars and all over the place. I'd be going to that thing, studying that thing. I mean, uh, what are we sending rovers to the moon and, and Mars and all that crap when this thing is just hanging out there? And uh, it's been there for a really long time, so I'm assuming it's abandoned. They got better ones now, like the one that you just showed in the sun. You know, uh, if you have a spacecraft that can fly up into the sun's corona, which is 10 million degrees, and suck up some plasma and fly out again... Uh, you're doing pretty good. But anyway, make of it what you will. Look up those pictures and uh, decide for yourself. Have a good day.